How do you go from saucing wobbly ducks that hop over your teammates' sticks to throwing highlight reel sauce? In this video, I'm going to break it down for you. So first off, when would we want to use a saucer pass? The most common scenario is when you're trying to avoid a defender's stick. This can be a quick chip over a stick on a two-on-one or a long and high rink-wide pass through multiple defenders. It's an awesome tool to have in your hockey toolbox, and when it's used effectively, it can create scoring opportunities, get you a beauty apple, and catch the eye of scouts. So let's get into it. I'm going to break it down into three steps. First up is the setup. You'll want to start the puck off in what I call your control zone, either at the side of your body if you're saucing the puck straight forward, or in front of your body if you're saucing the puck laterally to a teammate. For me, the ideal spot is just in front of my toes. Find what works for you, but just make sure it's not too far out in front or behind you, which would make the saucing motion difficult. Next up is the stick motion. Start by pulling your blade back roughly 4 to 8 inches behind the puck. Push your stick forward with your bottom hand, opening up your blade slightly just before contact by rolling your wrists ever so slightly. Make contact with the puck at the heel of the blade and let it roll all the way to the toe before it leaves your stick. This is the toughest part of the saucer pass and we will get into some tips and fixes here in a sec. But first I want to touch on the last step, which is the follow through. Continue through the puck with an open blade in the direction of your target. The speed and height in which you follow through will be the key factor that determines how high and far your saucer pass travels in the air. For short chips to a teammate close by, you will want to follow through soft and low, and for longer distance sauce, you'll need to follow through with more speed and finish with a stick higher in the air. All right, so now that we know how to do the saucer pass, let's look at the biggest issues that players have. The first is not being able to get the puck to land flat on the ice. This is solved by putting more spin on the puck. The more spin we can put on the puck, the flatter and tighter it will travel, allowing it to land smoothly on the ice without hopping or bouncing over sticks. It's easier said than done and takes a lot of practice, but there are a few things that we can do to ensure that we're maximizing spin. The first is to ensure that you're making contact with the heel of the blade and allowing the puck to roll all the way to the toe before it leaves your stick. You will want to avoid making contact in the middle of your blade. Next, focus on pulling your hands across your body as the puck is rolling across your blade. It will feel almost like a slicing motion. Keeping those two tips in mind should help you tighten up that spin with practice. The second issue players have is not being able to get air or elevation on the puck. If you're struggling with this, make sure you are opening up your blade slightly right before impact with the puck, almost opposite to what you would think to do when you're taking a wrist shot. This can be done with a subtle wrist roll as your stick blade is coming forward. Once you have that down, you want to take a look at your hands on follow through. Are you stopping them too soon after contact like I tend to do when chipping for a double bogey on the golf course? Make sure your hands are following through across your body and in an upwards motion to allow the puck to get some height. If you can't get the puck elevated, try taking some video footage and watch to ensure that you're opening the blade slightly and not stopping too quickly with your hands. Here's a clip of me practicing three different distances for the saucer pass. In the first chip sauce, you'll notice that my stick stops just below the blue line. On the medium length saucer pass, my stick gets well above the blue line. And on the long distance sauce, my stick gets out of the camera frame. Okay, so next up, I'm going to get into some practice ideas for the saucer pass and a little challenge I set up for myself. But first, I want to ask for a quick favor. If you're finding this video helpful, I'd love it if you could do me a big favor and smash that thumbs up button to help my channel out and let me know that you like these type of videos. All right, so if you want to practice the saucer pass at home, I have two tips for you. Number one is to make the target you're aiming for on the ground. Instead of practicing your saucer passes into a net, it's better if you can have the target on the ground to simulate a game situation. When you're throwing sauce in a game, you want to visualize where you want the puck to land. So practicing it the same way makes the most sense. I'm using two foam blocks, but you can really use anything. Number two is to ensure that you're practicing all different distances of saucer passes. If you get too comfortable with one distance from over practicing it, you might find yourself struggling to adjust on the ice in game situations. To get creative, set up a few different targets and have a partner call out which one to aim for as you go through a bucket of pucks. And now it's challenge time. I'm going to run through 30 pucks trying to hit one of the two foam pads near the shooting tarp. Take your guess on how many I'm going to hit out of 30. And while you make your pick, I'm going to take a second to say thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it again, please do me a big favor and smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you want to take your hockey performance to the next level. All right, let's go.